construction we are, therefore, T left with the final opposites, joy and sorrow, good and evil, this junction and conjunction that is to say, the many in one flux and permanence, greatness and triviality, freedom and necessity, God and the world. In this list, the pairs of opposites are in experience with a certain ultimate directness of intuition, except in the case of the last pair. God and the world introduce the note of interpretation. They embody the interpretation of the cause. Homological problem in terms of a fundamental metaphysical doctrine as to the quality of creative origination, namely, conceptual appetition and physical realization. This topic constitutes the last chapter of cosmology. 344. Final Interpretation. Thus, when we make a distinction of reason, and con 522, cider God in the abstraction of a primordial actuality, we must ascribe to him neither fullness of feeling, nor consciousness. He is the unconditioned actuality of conceptual feeling at the base of things, so that, by reason of this primordial actuality, there is an order in the relevance of eternal objects to the process of creation. His unity of conceptual operations is a free creative act, untrammeled by reference to any particular course of things. It is deflected neither by love, nor by hatred, for what in fact comes to pass. The particularities of the actual world presuppose it, while it merely presupposes the general metaphysical character of creative advance, of which it is the primordial exemplification. The primordial nature of God is the acquirement by creativity of a primordial character. His conceptual actuality at once exemplifies and establishes the categorial conditions. The conceptual feelings, which compose his primordial nature, exemplify in their subjective forms their mutual sensitivity and their subjective unity of subjective aim. These subjective forms are valuations determining the relative relevance of eternal objects for each occasion of actuality. He is the lure for feeling, the eternal urge of desire. His particular relevance to each creative act, T as it arises from its own conditioned standpoint in the world, constitutes him the initial, object of desire, establishing the initial phase of each subjective aim. A quotation from Aristotle's Metaphysics 1 expresses some analogies to, and some differences from, this line of thought, and since that which is moved and mobest is intermediate, there is so nothing which moves without being moved, being eternal, substance, and actuality. And the object of desire and the object of thought move in this way, they move without being moved. The primary objects of desire and of thought are the same. For the apparent good is the object of appetite, and the real good is the primary object of rational wish. Tiva desire is Conse 523 point on opinion rather than opinion on desire, for the thinking is the starting point. And thought is moved by the object of thought, and one of the two kalumens to Bob. Posits is in itself the object of thought. Aristotle had not made the distinction between conceptual feelings and the intellectual feelings which alone involve consciousness. But if, conceptual feeling, with its subjective form of valuation, be substituted for, thought, thinking, and, opinion, in the above quotation, the agreement is exact. Section 3 there is another side to the nature of God which cannot be omitted. 
Throughout this exposition of the philosophy of organism we have been 1 Metaphysics L072 of 23 to 32, T Trans, by Professor W. P. Ross. My attention was came to the appositeness of this particular quotation by Mr. F. J. Carson. 346. Final interpretation. In it there is no loss, no obstruction. The world is felt in a unison of immediacy. The property of combining creative advance with 525 for attention of mutual immediacy is what in the previous section is meant by the term everlasting. The wisdom of subjective aim prehends every actuality for what it can be in such a perfected system its sufferings, its sorrows, its failures, its triumphs, its immediacies of joy woven by rightness of feeling into the harmony of the universal feeling, which is always immediate, always many, always one, always with novel advance, moving onward and never perishing. The revolts of destructive evil, purely self-regarding, are dismissed into their triviality of merely individual facts, and yet the good they did achieve in individual joy, in individual sorrow, in the introduction of needed contrast, is yet saved by its relation to the completed whole. The image in it is but an image the image under which this operative growth of God's nature is best conceived, is that of a tender care that nothing be lost. The consequent nature of God is his judgment on the world. He sassies the world as it passes into the immediacy of his own life. It is the judgment of a tenderness which loses nothing that can be saved. It is also the judgment of a wisdom which uses what in the temporal world is mere wreckage. Another image which is also required to understand his consequent nature is that of his infinite patience. The universe includes a threefold creative act composed of I for one infinite conceptual realization, E the multiple solidarity of three physical realizations in the temporal world. E the ultimate unity of the multiplicity of actual fact with the primordial conceptual fact. If we conceive the first term and the last term in their unity over against the intermediate multiple freedom of physical realizations in the temporal world, we conceive of the patience of God, tenderly saving the turmoil of the intermediate world by the completion of his own nature. The sheer force of things lies in the intermediate physical process. This is the energy of physical production. God's role is not the combat of productive force 526 with productive force, of destructive force with destructive force, it lies in the patient operation of the overpowering rationality of his conceptual harmonization. He does not create the world, he saves it, or, more accurately, he is the poet of the world, with tender patience leading it by his vision of truth, beauty, and goodness. Section B. The vicious separation of the flux from the permanence leads to the concept of an entirely static God, with eminent reality, in relation to an entirely fluent world, with deficient reality. But if the opposite, static and fluent, have once been so explained as separately to characterize diverse actualities, the interplay between the thing which is static and the things which are fluent involves contradiction at every step in its explanation. Such philosophies must include the notion of illusion as a fundamental. 348. Final Interpretation Mary can 528 only be expressed in terms of a group of antitheses, whose apparent self-contradictions depend on neglect of the diverse categories of existence. 
In each antithesis there is a shift of meaning which converts the opposition into a contrast. It is as true to say that God is permanent and the world fluent, as that the world is permanent and God is fluent. It is as true to say that God is one and the world many, as that the world is one and God many. It is as true to say that, in comparison with the world, God is actual eminently, as that, in comparison with God, the world is actual eminently. It is as true to say that the world is imminent in God, as that God is imminent in the world. It is as true to say that God transcends the world, as that the world transcends God. It is as true to say that God creates the world, as that the world creates God. God and the world are the contrasted opposites in terms of which creativity achieves its supreme task of transforming disjoined multiplicity, with its diversities in opposition, into concrescent unity, with its diversities in contrast. In each actuality there it are two concrescent poles of realization, enjoyment, and appetition, that is, the physical, and the conceptual. For God the conceptual is prior to the physical, for the world the physical poles are prior to the conceptual poles. A physical pole is in its own nature exclusive, bounded by contradiction. A conceptual pole is in its own nature all-embracing, unbounded by contradiction. The former derives its share of infinity from the infinity of appetition, the latter derives its share of limitation from the exclusiveness of enjoyment. Thus, by reason of his priority of appetition, there can be but one primordial nature for God, and, by reason of their priority of enjoyment, there must be one history of many actualities in the physical world. 529 God and the world stand over against each other, expressing the final metaphysical truth that appetitive vision and physical enjoyment have equal claim to priority in creation. But no two actualities can be torn apart, each is all in all. Thus each temporal occasion embodies God, and is embodied in God. In God's nature, Permanence is primordial and flux is derivative from the world. In the world's nature, flux is primordial and permanence is derivative from God. Also the world's nature is a pre-mordial datum for God, and God's nature is a primordial datum for the world. Creation achieves the reconciliation of permanence and flux when it has reached its final term which is everlastingness the apotheosis of the world. Opposed elements stand to each other in mutual requirement. In their unity, they inhibit or contrast. God and the world stand to each other in this opposed requirement. God is the infinite ground of all mentality, the unity of vision-seeking physical multiplicity. The world is the multiplicity. 350. Final Interpretation. Existence. The function of being a means is not disjoined from the function of being an end. The sense of work beyond itself is immediately enjoyed as an overpowering element in the individual self-attainment. It is in this way that the immediacy of sorrow and pain is transformed into an element of triumph. This is the notion of redemption through suffering which haunts the world. It is the generalization of its very minor exemplification as the aesthetic value of discourse in art. Thus the universe is to be conceived as attaining the active self-expression of its own variety of opposites of its own freedom and its own necessity, of its own multiplicity and its own unity, of its own imperfection and its own perfection. All the opposites are elements in the nature of things, and are incorrigibly there. The concept of God, 
is the way free which we understand this incredible fact that what cannot be, yet is. Section 7. Thus the consequent nature of God is composed of a multiplicity of elements with individual self-realization. It is just as much a multiplicity as it is a unity, it is just as much one immediate fact as it is an unresting advance beyond itself. Thus the actuality of God must also be understood as a multiplicity of actual components in process of creation. This is God in his function of the kingdom of heaven. Each actuality in the temporal world has its reception into God's nature. The corresponding element in God's nature is not temporal actuality, but is the transmutation of that temporal one actuality into a living, ever-present fact. An enduring personality in the temporal world is a root of occasions in which the successors with some peculiar completeness sum up their predecessors. The correlate fact in God's nature is an even more complete unity of life in a chain of elements for which succession does not mean loss of immediate unison. This element in God's nature inherits from the temporal counterpart 532 according to the same principle as in the temporal world the future inherits from the past. Thus in the sense in which the present occasion is the person now, and yet with his own past, so the counterpart in God is that person in God. But the principle of universal relativity is not to be stopped at the consequent nature of God. This nature itself passes into the temporal world according to its gradation of relevance to the various congress and occasions. There are thus four creative phases in which the universe accomplishes its actuality. There is first the phase of conceptual origination, deficient in actuality, but infinite in its adjustment of valuation. Secondly, there is the temporal phase of physical origination, with its multiplicity of actualities. In this phase full actuality is attained, but there is deficiency in the solidarity of individuals with each other. This phase derives its determinate conditions from the first phase. Thirdly, there is the phase of perfected actuality, in which the many are one everlastingly, without the qualifica. 356. Index. Actual occasion Kant. Titty, 18, 22, 73, 77, 141, 211, used to stress extensiveness, 77, excludes God, 88 actual world, 4, 25, 27, 33, 46, 59, 286, as datum, 4, 16, 65, 69, 72, 65, 87. 154 quintillion 158 quadrillion 211 trillion 212 billion 230 million 233,286, and Positions, 11, 194 to 95, 204, 265, as process, 22, definition of, 23, 28, 150, and efficient causation, 24 to 25, 169, 178, 277, as determinate, 45, and God, 47, 65, 93, 220, as relative, 59, 65 to 66, 93, 210 to 11, 226, 
284, conditions potentiality, 65, 129, as atomic, 67, 286, as nexus, 73, 77, 230, 238, as mine, 76, 81, witness of, 81, knowledge of, 81, order in chaos in, 86, 110 to 11, givenness of, 129, as ground of probability judgments, 203, perspective of, 210, objective immortality of, 230, indetermination of, 284, divisibility of, 28,586 adaptation, 83, 107, 163 adequacy, she, she, xiv, 3, 6, 9, 11, 13, 15, 239, 343 adventure, 9, 14, 42, 78, 80, Inversion and aversion valuation up and down 24, 32, 184, 234, 241, 247, 248, 254, 261, 266, 277, 278, 291, 328, 339. Aesthetics, 5, 39, interests, she, emphasis, 102, experience, 62, 183, 185, 212, 279, supplement, 213, harmony, category of, 255, fact, 279, laws, 280, culture, 337, gods, 340, affirmation, 191, 243, 270, 273 to 74, affirmation, negation, contrast, 24, 243, 256, 261, 267 aggregates, 173, 286 aim, at unity, 224, at contrast, 249, private, 290. CA.ELSO initial aim, subjective aim Alexander, Samuel, 28, 41 algebra, 332 all, 208 all things flow, 208 alternation, 187 alternatives, 11, 148, 161, 249, 278 analogous occasions, 99, 250, 251 to 53 analogy, and probability, induction, 49, 201, 204, 205, 2607, and congruence, 97, 331, 333. Analysis, 4, 19, 22, 23, 51 billion 153 million 166, 211, 235. See also division. Animal body, 106. In perception, 63, 11,819, 169 to 70, 178 to 79, 311, 315, as part of environment, 64, 76, 119, 170, 
234, Theory of 103, Stellas 103, 104, Life of 108, Order of 180, 339. CA. Elso body, bodily animal faith, 48, 52, 54, 81, 142, 152 animals, 107, 181 anticipation, 27, 179, 204, 205, 278 antitheses, 348 any, 114, 162, 256, 257, 261 appearance, near, 18, 54, 152, 229, 347, world is, 49, in reality, 72 appetition, 32 to 33, 51, 72, 83, 102, 150, 154, 163, 184, 212, 341, 348, in God, 48, 105, 207, 316, 347, 348 applicability, 3, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 14, 20, 93 appreciation, 27, 47, 85, 212, 213, 311. Three hundred twenty seven a priori figly, one hundred forty six Aquinas, Thomas, eleven, one hundred eight arbitrariness, six, seven, seventy one, ninety one Aristotelian, primary substance, she, twenty one, thirty, fifty, fifty nine, seventy nine, one hundred thirty eight, one hundred fifty seven, one hundred fifty eight. Matter primary substance and creativity, 21, 31, substantial form, 34 Aristotle, 10, 39, influence of, she, 51, 84, 159, and Aristotelian logic, 30, 51, 209. And substance quality subject predicate thought, 30, 137, 2Q9, and ontological principle, 40, and entities present in others, 50, and final causes, 84, and forms, 96. And fluency, 209, and Platonism, 209, on generation, 209, and quantity, 332, and golden mean, 339, on God, 342, 343, 344 arithmetic, as metaphysical, 198 to 99 art. 9, 162, 63228, 280, 317, 339, 350, and God, 189, and morality, 317 Asiatic thought, 7 association, 129, 175, 299 8, goddess of mischief, 244, 351 Atomicity, Atomism, 27, 117, 235, 237, and Final Causation, 19, and Continuity, Extension, 36, 67, 
72, 73, 123, 292, of actuality, 30.